you and Devangi, it was not coming, just the frog part is coming, right? So we can do one thing, we can, uh, because in today's class, uh, Asha has not joined in, so we can go to frog, because we had two things left, neural and muscular tissues. We did epithelial and connective, right? You know? Yes. Yeah. Good evening, Jania. How are you? Okay, Jania, uh, for chapter seven, can you tell me what is your syllabus status? So, is this chapter also deleted for you and just frog is coming as the model system or what is the status? Accordingly, we can decide. Yeah, I received some messages from Jania. Yes, for Jania also it's deleted. Nothing is coming from this chapter at all for you? Okay, only the model system. There's the frog. Okay, perfect. So let's let's do frogs today in this class. How about it, Hiram and Jania? Yeah. Okay, Vaziha, what about you? I think we do not have, I also don't have Vaziha's uh, consensus. Vaziha, what is your status of this chapter? Okay, perfect. Only frog, she says. Cool. So let me quickly tell you that we have done the neural part and the muscular part, um, most of it, just a few things need to be told and that we'll do after we finish frog first. So when I will be discussing frog, keep in mind all these four different kind of tissues and their lineages for the discussion sake, okay? The things that they have deleted is okay, but kind of the point is that all these four kind of tissues are present in frogs. So as a, The model organism to study. We are studying frog here. Okay. Now, what do you already know about, know about frog? What is frog? What kind of a animal is it? It belongs to the kingdom Animalia, right? What is the scientific name? What is the scientific name of frog? So, yeah. so you said that they belong to phylum animalia, but kingdom animalia. Uh, I said they belong to kingdom animalia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, what is their scientific name? In our NCRT, they call it Rana Tigrina, right? Yeah, that's in India. Yeah. So Rana Tigrina is actually, this name has been changed from the scientific community now. And the, basically this Rana Tigrina, the name um, was for the Indian bullfrog, right? These are big frogs. That's why they're called bullfrogs. So Indian bullfrogs were called Rana Tigrena, but NCRT has not updated itself. Now this name is no longer used. They changed the name to Haplobatracus tigrinus. They decided maybe they thought it's too simple. <laughs> so this is the name now. Haplobatracus. Tigrinus. Okay. So this is the scientific name of Indian bullfrog, which you will find in any textbook that is updated or anywhere. Okay. <clears throat> it was earlier known as Rana Tigrina. So remember that just for your. Okay. And what kind of organism are they? There's some basic cold blooded they are amphibians right so you are correct they are 
amphibians, hence they are cold blooded. And what do we call cold blooded organisms in scientific terms? Poikilothermus. Poikilothermus. Okay. Perfect. And because they are amphibians, what else can you tell about frogs just by knowing that they are amphibians? Because they are amphibians, they depend on both land and water to complete their life cycle, right? Yes or no? <clears throat> also, with respect to their breeding season and habitat, they can show a change in their color, okay? Now, they, that this change is not as dynamic as the change that chameleon shows, but their skin also turns greenish to yellowish, different shades of yellow versus different shades of green, depending on where are they living and is if it is their breeding season or not. So they have the ability to change this color and use it for camouflage in their environment. If they're living in grass, grassy areas, they will be more greener and towards the uh, yellowish regions, and during the breeding season, they turn a little yellowish, okay? And we know that uh, um, frogs live in deep burrows and mostly they come out during the monsoon season because that's also their breeding season. And you can understand why they can come out during monsoon season because they're amphibians, they need water to reproduce, okay? And lay their eggs. So both male and female, uh, their breeding season starts during monsoon and during the winters because they are cold-blooded they go into long winter sleeps like other cold-blooded organisms like reptile and that's called hibernation right so they hibernate during the winters because they cannot sustain the cold and you will see that uh, they also cannot so they hibernate during winters because they cannot survive cold. They also cannot survive very dry conditions. So they also, it's a long sleep. Okay, it's called winter sleep. Though it's not sleep actually. This state is not sleep, but it's known as winter sleep and summer sleep. So during the summer, they also sleep for long. So they only are active for a very short period in the year. Most of the time they're sleeping, not sleeping. Basically they are hibernating or in summers, the summer sleep is called estivation. So they show estivation during summers. Rest is rainy seasons. That is where they are active. Is it clear? The reason for both the sleeps are different. Here the reason is temperature. Here also it's temperature plus lack of water, okay? Is it clear, everyone? <clears throat> yes, sir. Now, talking about a little bit of frog morphology quickly. So how does a frog look? How can you describe its appearance, anyone? First, talking about their skin. So there's something called toad also. You know toad and frog? What is the difference between a toad and a frog? No? So frogs have a smooth and slippery skin, which is moist most of, mostly. So smooth and slippery skin. And can you tell me why is it moist most of the time or almost all the time? Due to presence of mucus on their skin. Okay. 
So it's always moist. Versus when you talk about toads, how are they different from frogs? Their skin does not need to be moist all the time. So they can have dry and uh, a little non-mucus uh, containing skins, okay? Now, one fun fact about the frogs, as you know, uh, you must be knowing as frogs very rarely drink water. Very rarely. Like, I don't think so. There's no need for them to drink water because they live in and, in and around water most of the time when they are active. And their skin is capable of absorbing water through the skin, like through the outer skin. So they almost never need to drink water, almost. Unless and until there comes a situation where you are culturing a frog in an environment or you are studying the frog or the frog is dehydrated because the skin is not getting moisture, then it will resort to drinking water from the mouth. Otherwise, in the wild, in its natural habitat, it doesn't need to drink water at all. Okay, It can absorb water from the skin. You can just write down. Can absorb water. From skin. They can also absorb respiratory gases. But this is not done very brilliantly. It can be done to some extent, but they still need um, lungs to breathe. Is it clear? Is it clear, everyone? Okay, perfect. Now, apart from the skin, what else? How does a frog look like? What about the body of the frog? Anyone? Any specific feature about its body? So if you look at a frog, the body can be divided into two regions, a head which is prominent and uh, <coughs> a trunk, which is anything apart from head. So they have no concept of neck. You will not see a neck-like structure in a frog, just a head and then the whole body beneath the head, which is the trunk. Okay. And both the concept of neck and tail is not present. While it can be present in other, neck mostly is not present in most of the amphibians, but in some it can be. But tail is present in many amphibians, but not frog. But one thing which is interesting is that tail is present in tadpoles. And what are tadpoles? Tadpoles are frogs. Babies. Babies, or we should not use the word babies, but we should say offsprings. Babies is a very human term. So they are tadpoles. So they have a concept of tail. Okay, they look more like a fish and less like a frog. Then they undergo changes in their body, which is called um, molting, okay, Morpho like morphometric changes, and become frog. They lose their tail, grow their limbs, and they become frogs. Okay, but remember, tail and neck can be present in other amphibians, but not here. Now, one thing is you will see that uh, frog eyes are protruding outside, okay? And they don't have an eyelash or a, or a, or you can say, a, they have a nictitating membrane, okay? Did we talk? No, we were not talking about nictitating. Do you know anyone who, what is a nictitating membrane? Eyes are bulged out and are covered with
nictitating membrane anyone knows what is a nictitating membrane iram <clears throat> no no okay we have we have joined by devangi as well good evening devangi how are you good evening sir Okay, good evening. How are you doing? We are studying frog as a model organism today in the class. Okay. Yes, sir. So we just have covered some basic of uh, the scientific name, their hibernation, estivation patterns, and now we are talking about morphology. Okay. So my question, we have reached here at a point where we are talking about the eyes. So frogs have bulged out eyes, which are covered with nictitating membrane. So do you have any idea, Devangi? What do we mean by nictitating membrane? No? Okay. Let me show you a video if I may. Okay. Sir, I think uh, translucent. Yes, yes, you're right. Let me see if I can show you a video. Nectitating membrane and frog. It is a toad actually. It's very clearly people have recorded it in crocodile, but also in frogs. It must be there somewhere. Okay, I could find one in toad, not in no. frog. Wait. So I will be sharing this screen. Can you all see the screen that I'm sharing? Yeah, I'm sorry for this advertisement, but you all can see the screen that I'm sharing, people? Yes, no. I can't see your reactions for some moment, so you, anyone has to speak. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to show you a nictitating membrane in a, a Gulf Coast toad. So this is a toad. And the eyes and the nictitating membrane are conserved in amphibians and reptiles both. So you can see it in crocodiles, toads, frogs, but it will give you a concept of. So here you can see, first of all, let me tell you why it is a toad and why it is not a. So this is a toad because can you see the skin? It doesn't look moist, right? It is very dry. Yes or no, everyone? As I said, I cannot see your reactions for some time. So please speak. Yeah. Can you see the skin has some bulgy, spiny appearance and it is dry, right? Even the mouth region is very dry. And you will see that this, so what is this is, so why do they do this? So this part, which they are moving, they actually can blow air in it and produce sound. So this during the mating season, toads and frogs both use to attract the female, okay? Okay, so let's see. Okay, I think you cannot hear the sound. Let me also make you hear the sound. Is the sound audible to all of you? Okay, now, now pay attention to the eyes only. So, the yes. sound is not audible. It's just a uh, sound is not audible. Why is it not audible? It should be audible, right? No, it's, there's nothing speaking. It's just a noise, basically. Like of a rainforest. Sound is not important. Let me mute the sound. Okay, but pay attention to the eyes. Okay? Pay attention when it blinks.
is not blinking though, but it should. It should have blinked at some point, I feel. Did it not blink at all? It should have. Otherwise, this video is just a failure. Yes. Can you see this, everyone? Let me make it slower. I can make it slow, right? Playback speed. Let's go to half the speed. Okay, cool. Now look when the when it closes. Try to close. Can you see this, everyone? Yes, yes, sir. Let me go over it again. See, right? So something came from the down, but it was not like a membrane eyelid. It was translucent, right? It looks like a jelly covering, like a windshield type. So that is called nictitating membrane, this part. It is translucent. So even if this membrane is up, the eye gets a protection, but the frogs and toads and reptiles can see underwater. The humans also have the remnants of nictitating membrane in our eyes. So if you look carefully towards the end, like towards the um, part of your eyes, which is towards the nose, okay? From where the tear glands, where the tear glands are, okay? So you will see that there's a skin fold that is useless and you cannot control it, but it's still a remnant of that skin fold is present, okay? You can see your eyes in the mirror. That is a remnant of nictitating membrane which in evolution mammals do not mammals that evolved on land like humans monkeys and all they do not need this nictitating membrane so that part is lost but still the remnant is present aquatic mammals still can have some nictitating membrane which is functional now that is another proof of evolution that we share common common lineage at one point of time from for, from these organisms and there are common features which are imbibed in both our <clears throat> anatomies and morphologies. Okay, so one last final time, we'll see it and then we'll, yes. So this is nictitating membrane. Make sense, everyone? Yes, Amda, sir. It makes sense? Perfect. So now let's go back to our notebook. So that is nictitating membrane, which covers the eye and it helps the frog to cover, protect the eye and still look when it is underwater, like to be able to see the surrounding when it is underwater, okay? And as you could see there also, a pair of nostrils were present at the snout, right, in the toad also. So a mouth and a pair of nostrils are present for breathing in air because they have lungs, okay? But you could not see any ear, right? There's no concept of ear like the outer ear like we have so instead of an of a ear like humans there's something called tympanum so tympanum is present which um, on the either side of the eyes behind the eyes it is like the ear equivalent to ear which receives the sound signal so tympanum can perceive sound signals, okay? And they are adapted for swimming. And what is that adaptation that helps them to swim? They have webbed toes, right? Their toes are webbed. Is it clear? And how do they move around? They leap. They have a leaping motion. Like they jump, make leaps, and their, their hind legs are bigger. Are longer than four limbs. Okay, is it clear, everyone? Pop 
perfect now there is a concept of sexual dimorphism do you know anyone knows what is sexual dimorphism so frogs do show sexual dimorphism di means male and female yes right di means two morphism means two kinds of morphology so sexual dimorphism means that males look different from females and how do they look different from females anyone knows so the video that i just showed you was of a toad where the toad male ones have vocal cords yes males have a vocal sac vocal cords both will have but a vocal sac which is beneath the like the jaw and as i said they can blow air in it and can blow it up like a balloon and then produce sound from that air okay to attract so during the monsoons you must have heard this tar tar sound from frogs right they make this crackling tar tar voice right frogs yes water to attract females that is because of they have so write down males have vocal sac and something called copulatory pod sorry cap copulatory pad on the four limbs mostly they are present on the first finger first digit okay so they just have three digits in their four limbs so out of that three digits on the first digit there is a copulatory pad now this pad helps the frog to make a grip on the female because if you have seen frogs copulating so if um, if this is a female frog let's say not very good at making frog but let's say this is a female frog the male frog will be smaller and it will be sitting on top of the female frog have you seen frogs piggy banking so when i was a kid i used to think that the smaller frog is the baby frog and the bigger frog is the mother frog or the father frog but that's not true so because there is no smaller frog smaller frog basically are just small they cannot reproduce and when they are very small they are tadpoles so i didn't know that of course so but this is the male frog and this is the female frog so the male piggy banks on the female and stays in close vicinity for a reason so the moment because in frogs the fertilization is external correct is it clear everyone so how yes. to how to make sure in by by external fertilization i mean that the sperm and the ovum will fuse with each other outside the female body and outside means in the environment and the environment is water right so they actually reproduce in the water so what happens is female lays eggs in the water and in the exact moment when the female is laying eggs the male has to release all the sperms in the water at the same place so that the sperms can effectively fertilize the eggs if the female lays eggs somewhere else in the pond and the male releases sperm somewhere else the chances of fertilization are not there or very less so to just ensure it male needs during this uh, reproductive process male needs to use its copulatory pod or copulatory pad and hold the female through a grip so is present here so the hands or the four limbs of the frog are used to hold the female and stay there and they also have vocal sac so is are to, these two things clear and also in size female frogs are bigger and male frogs are smaller a fully grown female will be bigger than a fully grown male okay hello aisha how are you okay cool 
Now, this was about morphology, sexual dimorphism, anything that we are missing out. Mm. No. Okay, now let's go to anatomy. Anatomy of frogs. So, uh, I think nowadays these experiments are banned by the education board, but earlier, um, I think during the BSc, at least, there used to be frog dissections, right? For you, I don't think there is a frog dissection, is it? No, right? You just have to learn it from the textbooks, correct? Right. Right? Yes, we don't have. So during the frog dissection, there were many kinds of experiment that everyone was given one frog as a model system. And on the same, on that one frog, you have to do multiple experiments and learn a lot of things about anatomy and everything, including the physiology as well. So first of all, um, frogs are higher, higher organisms. Amphibians are quite evolved as compared to other lower organisms like earthworms. So frogs being amphibians, they have well-developed organ systems. Okay. What all organ systems do you think frog have? Tell me a few. Digestive, circulatory, respiratory. Yes, digestive system. It has circulatory system and respiratory system. Respiratory system, perfect. And you're forgetting the most important system that coordinates all. A nervous system or a neural system. Okay. Excretory system and a reproductive system. So not to name, there are many more which are like immune system, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see that all these systems are also present in humans, right? So their physiology includes almost all the organ systems that human has. They also have a skeletal system, um, um, lymphoid system, they have immune system, et cetera. So the digestive system, what kind of digestive system it is? Open or closed? It's called a open. Okay. Yes. It means it has a mouth as the ingestion opening and as the the anus as the excretion like uh, removal opening. Circulatory system again open or closed? It has a closed circulatory system, right, was here. And respiratory system through which, what organs do they have? They have lungs, amphibians have lungs, which means though they can stay in water and you will find frogs in or around water, they cannot stay submerged in the water forever, okay? So they have to come out of the water to breathe because they breathe through lungs some amount of respiratory exchange they can do from their uh, moist skin but that not that's not enough for forever okay and about the nervous system do they have a brain do frogs have a brain yes or no yes so they have brain Plus, do they have a spinal cord? 
Yes, they have a dorsal spinal cord because they are vertebrates. In the excretory system, what do they have? They have kidneys, okay, which look different from human kidneys, but they do have kidneys, a pair of them. Also, they have ureters and a, a, a rectum through which they, so their urinary bladder is connected to the rectum. So they have kidneys plus ureter plus urinary bladder. Okay. And in the reproductive system, So they have ovaries and testes. In different because different sexes. Sorry, wrong sign. Okay, perfect. Now talking about some important things. So we will discuss. I'll tell you and you keep writing. So let's start with which one? The digestive system first. So the digestive system, what you have to un know about frogs is that they have well-defined elementary canal, just like us, we have. Um, and digestive glands are also present, which secrete enzymes and the digestion happens inside the body. Okay, so write down. Elementary canal, and digestive glands. Now talking about their diet, what do you think? What are frogs? Are they herbivorous or are they carnivorous or are they omnivorous? People, any idea? Would be great if someone can speak. So Devangi said carnivores. Yes. So frogs are carnivores, and especially the uh, haplobatrac hap haplobatracus tigrina. It is carnivores to an extent where bullfrogs can eat anything that is smaller than them and can fit into their mouths. Okay. So many bullfrogs of or different species of bullfrogs can also hunt and eat snakes. So it is counterintuitive to think because in nature we feel that snakes are predators of frogs, right? But bullfrogs can reverse this behavior because they are so big, snakes often cannot eat a bullfrog because snakes um, just swallow. Even bullfrogs also, they don't chew much, they just swallow. So they can actually swallow a whole snake if it fits in their mouth and stomach. Okay, so they're carnivorous. And just like any carnivorous organism, their intestines are very small in length. So they have a reduced intestine length because carnivorous do not need longer lengths. Herbivorous organisms need very long and long intestines. So if you see the intestines of a deer, or a, or a cattle, cow, buffalo, goat, they will have very, very long intestines as compared to tigers, humans, etc. Okay, because it takes much more time to digest cellulose than to digest um, uh, what what is what's present in flesh, collagen. Okay, is it clear, everyone? Perfect. So write down. They have small intestines because they are carnivores. And their openings, like 
So the intestine opens in rectum and then the opening of the rectum is called cloaca, called cloacal aperture. Cloaca is the opening of rectum through which they defecate. They remove undigested food out. This concept of cloaca is also present in reptiles and hence also in birds because birds evolved from reptiles and reptiles evolved from amphibians. Okay. We don't have the concept of cloaca being mammals. Okay. So that's the difference. So they also have a liver and pancreas. Okay. So write down digestive system includes liver and pancreas. So just like us, their liver also produce bile, which is stored in the gallbladder. So they have a liver and they have gallbladder. <clears throat> liver, <clears throat> liver produces bile and gallbladder stores it. Just like us, they have pancreas, which is a digestive, which produces enzymes, <clears throat> digestive enzymes. Okay, so there also in their stomach they have HCL to digest food. So their digestive system is quite similar to us, <clears throat> to humans, to such an extent that even in their intestines there are concepts of villi. So there are these finger like projections called villi, which we also have. Okay. <clears throat> So lots of similarities. I hope you all are writing this. That's why I'm giving you time. Everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. So these are similarities. If a question come, uh, comment on similarities of digestive system between frogs and humans. So you have to write these. And what about, so how do they catch the food? Just through their mouth. But has anyone seen a frog's tongue? How does a frog's tongue look like? Anyone has seen a frog tongue? So their tongues have two lobes. Okay, their tongue is bilobed. And they extend their bilobed tongue to catch. Just like in many reptiles you must have seen in, in chameleon, you know how do they catch their prey, right? They put their tongue out and at the end the insect sticks and they eat it. So frogs are also capable of doing it. Okay, they can throw their tongue protrude it out and their tongue also has two lobes towards the end. Now this bilobed, by bilobe I mean, so the tongue at the end will be like this. Okay, but this bilobe is very less prominent in frog. But if you go to um, uh, reptiles which have evolved from amphibians, you will see that this bilobed tongue is very very prominent right so in a snake you will find proper bilobe but in frog also there is a bilobe do you understand because they have evolved from phibians make sense everyone okay so write down they have a bilobed tongue with which they capture their food Okay, 
So that's about digestive system, things that you have to remember. Now let's talk about circulatory system. Okay. What about circulatory system? This is also known as the, what is circulatory system also known as? Blood vascular system, right? It contains heart and blood vessels. So what about it? So as you, to, as you know, it is closed type. It is well developed and they also have along with it lymphatic system like humans. So right down, they have lymphatic vas and vascular system both. And just like humans, their vascular system contains three things. Heart, which is a pumping organ, blood vessels in which the blood flows and the blood itself, which is a liquid connective tissue. Okay, so these are all similarities we are talking about. Heart, blood vessels and blood. Similarly, in the lymphatic system, just like humans, they have lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes. Right down, they have lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes. Now, what are the differences? The differences is unlike a human heart. So, how many? Uh, what? How? What is the structure of a human heart? How many chambers does a human heart have? A human heart has four chambers. Okay, two atria and two ventricles. Remember that we did that in human physiology. But a frog heart, being an amphibian, has just three chambers. It's a three-chambered heart. Just remember that fish has two. Amphibians evolved from fish, so they have one extra three. Then reptiles also have three, but there is one exception, which is crocodile. Crocodile is a reptile, but it has a four-chambered heart. And then from reptiles came birds, which again have a four-chambered heart. And Mammals have a four-chambered heart. So all the amphibians and almost all reptiles have three-chambered heart. So frog has a three-chambered heart, but in that three-chambered, two are atria and one is ventricle. Two atria and one ventricle. Okay. The heart is just like us. It is muscular and it acts as a pumping organ. Okay. And another similarity is now keep writing as similarities and dissimilarities. So similarity is that the blood of frog also is red because it contains hemoglobin. Okay. And the kind of cells which are present in the frog blood are similar. Like they have RBCs, WBCs and platelets. Okay. Is it clear everyone? Yes. So frogs have RBCs, WBCs and platelets. But the difference is that the RBCs of the frog have nucleus. They have nucleated RBCs, right down. Frogs have nucleated RBCs. And the similarity is that they also contain hemoglobin like us. Okay. Perfect. So that's about, I think, 
Are we missing something? Um, no. Okay. So lymphatic and circulatory system is done. Clear, everyone? Any doubts still here? Thumbs up if it's clear. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. Now let's go to respiratory system and write down. Lungs and skin, moist skin. So the respiratory system in frogs is slightly divided. So when they are in water versus in land, they use it differently. Okay. When they are on land, they are using lungs to breathe or when they are out of water. When they are half or completely submerged in water, they can to some extent do what is called cutaneous respiration. It means absorbing respiratory gases through moist skin. Okay. So we all know that water has dissolved oxygen, correct? Yes. And simply by diffusion, that dissolved oxygen can be absorbed or exchanged through the skin. For that, the skin has to be developed in a manner where the skin pores are always there to do this, like stomata of a leaf. And something should be always like mucus, always make a moist covering. So cutaneous respiration happens through diffusion where oxygen is exchanged through the skin. So when you respire through skin, it is called cutaneous respiration. And when you expire, um, when you respire through lungs, it is called pulmonary respiration. So it can do pulmonary respiration just like humans, but it can also show cutaneous respiration, which is different from humans. Okay. Is it clear, everyone? And the interesting thing that you should write is when they are hibernating, they do not breathe through their nostrils or lungs because when they are hibernating, they do not, they go inside a burrow where there is just very limited oxygen or gaseous, uh, respiratory gases present. So their lungs are not functional and their heartbeat is also minimal. So when frogs go to estivation and hibernation, they can slow down their heartbeat to an extent where it just beats once in five minutes or once in a few minutes. <clears throat> so very, very slow. Heart just beats minimal to keep the body alive, but the frog cannot do any activity. Okay. And why I say that that is not actually a real sleep. Okay. Hibernation and estivation both are not real sleep because it has been seen in organisms that hibernate. When they go to hibernate, they stay in hibernation for months. Then they come out of hibernation and go to sleep. Okay. Because they have not been sleeping for months. It's like that. But we still call it summer and winter sleep, which is a misleading term. But you should know that. So when they are in their hibernation and estivation, they only do respiration or breathing through skin. So write down. During estivation and hibernation, only cutaneous respiration takes place. Is it okay? Okay, so that's respiration. Respiration is done. Now let's come to nervous system. 
the system that makes control and coordination happen. So again, the similarities are that, um, okay, one more system I will teach along with nervous system is like, write down, frogs have both nervous system and endocrine system. So they, they can, just like humans, they can do neural control and coordination. They can also do chemical control and coordination of their body, like we can do. So they have both neural system and endocrine system. And their glands are also similar like humans. We have pituitary, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, pineal, pancreas, adrenal. All these glands are also present in frogs. Right down. They have endocrine glands, which are all present in frogs. They can secrete hormones just like we do. Okay. Another, and in terms of nervous system, again, it's similar. The similarity is that they also have their nervous system divided into two parts, CNS and PNS, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Is that okay? Central contains brain and spinal cord and peripheral is all the nerves that go from the spinal cord into the limbs and other parts of the body. So you can see that there's a lot more similarity between human and frogs. But if you read earthworm, you will find less similarity between humans and earthworms comparatively. So as you go away, you know, from humans, you go to um, birds and reptiles, then amphibians, then insects, invertebrates, worms. The farther you keep going, the less number of similar characters you will find. But amphibians are highly evolved. So their characters are very, very similar to humans. Okay. Now, what is the difference? The difference is right down. Humans have 12 pair of cranial nerves. 12 pair means we have total 24 nerves which go from our body into our brain. They are called cranial nerves. So humans have 12 pair of cranial nerves, but frogs have 10 pair, two less than the human. But they also have a brain box, a brain, but only 10 pairs of cranial nerves go into their brain. But for humans, it is 12. Okay. Perfect. And another similarity is that they are, their brain is also divided into forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain, but you don't need to know that much in detail so it's fine they also have a cerebellum etc but it's fine we just know the difference and some major similarities so nervous system is okay anyone any doubt till now no doubts okay So now we next go to excretory system. So next is excretory system. So again, talking about um, they also excrete nitrogenous waste. Now, can someone tell me? What do frogs? So remember I told you there are three kind of organisms on the basis of what kind of nitrogenous waste they secrete. Remember anyone? What are the three kinds of organisms? Can anyone tell? Moniotelic, uh, ureotelic. And uricotelic, right? Yes, sir. Yes. 
So what do you think frogs are? A monotelic, ureotelic or uricotelic? So frogs do live in water to some extent. But remember that they do not live in water forever. So it does not make sense if they are a monotelic because what if when there is no water, right? And I told you that they don't drink plenty of water, cannot store a lot of water in their body. So they absorb water through the skin. Okay. So frogs are ureotelic, just like humans. Again, a similarity. Humans and frogs both are ureotelic. We secrete urea. Excrete, sorry, we excrete urea. And they also have kidneys. So it works in a similar manner where the blood takes, blood goes to the kidneys and all the, all the harmful substances from the blood is taken out by the kidneys. Okay, separated by the kidneys and excreted out through the urinary bladder. Okay. Okay, so that's very similar. Nothing to <clears throat> much in detail in excretory system, just this. Okay, now we come to reproductive system. So they have a very well defined male and female reproductive system, again, just like humans. So male reproductive system contains testes. Okay, again, one pair of testes. And um, the difference, only difference is that in frogs, now write down similarity is that they have a pair of testes, but the difference is in frogs, it is not present outside the abdominal cavity. It is present inside the body. And in fact, it is present on the top of uh, kidneys. Okay. Write down. The testes are present to the upper part of the kidneys. And that is in general a rule in nature that organisms which are cold-blooded, like amphibians and reptiles, they don't need to maintain a lower body temperature, uh, to maintain a temperature lower than the body temperature for their testes. So in humans, the testes are out of the body into the scrotum because we need to maintain a lower temperature in our testes for spermatogenesis. Is it clear, everyone? Yeah. But frogs and reptiles are anyways cold-blooded. So their body temperature anyways depends on external environment. So they cannot keep their body temperature high. So their testes are present inside all the time. Okay. And do you remember that when I was teaching you a reproductive system, I told you that human kidneys are also formed as an M when, when we are embryo, sorry, testes. When, when a human baby is an embryo, a male baby, the testes are actually formed on kidneys, like on the top of kidneys, somewhere there, very in the lower abdomen. Then it descends down into the scrotum and that is called uh, that is called descent of the testes. If that fails to happen, there is a disorder in human males. What And what is that disorder, Paul? If kidneys, uh, if testes stay inside the abdomen near the kidneys, Remember anyone? It's, co it's called cryptorchidism, right? Where the testes fail to descend down. So there again is a similarity at the level of origin of testes. Both in humans and frogs, testes originate near the kidneys. But in frogs, they stay there forever. In humans, they descend down. Is it clear, everyone? Okay. And in another similarity in human and frog males is that, remember I told you that human males 
have a common passage for sperm and urine both right in frog males also there is a common passage for urine sperm and also the fecal matter so there is only one opening which is called cloacal aperture or cloacal opening so the cloacal op opening is a common opening for food waste right down for undigested food waste okay which means fecal matter for urine and for sperms all these three things come through the same opening in in frogs just like both urine so in humans the difference is that we have a different opening for the fecal matter through the rectum but the same opening for sperms and urine which is called the uh, urethra in the penis in frogs all three have the same which is called cloacal opening okay so from rectum from the urinary bladder and from the uh, testes the duct comes together and meets at cloaca and then cloacal aperture is the um, exit clear everyone perfect and about the female let's come to female reproductive system so write down just like humans female frogs have a pair of ovaries and again in females also these ovaries are present near the kidneys okay and this is the similarity they also have a pair of ov oviduct so the oviduct in humans is called fallopian tube in frogs it's just called oviducts so they also have one pair of oviducts this is the similarity and the difference is they don't have a concept of uterus because uterus is only for internal fertilization and internal development of the baby frog females they just lay all their eggs outside in the environment so female frog frogs have their oviducts connected to the cloaca or cloacal opening separately so basically from two sides two oviducts come and join in the cloaca and then from there they directly throw all their eggs out in the water okay so that is a dissimilarity <clears throat> now that is a difference make sense everyone right and one thing that you should know <clears throat> which is very interesting is that a female at one go during the breeding season can lay around 3000 eggs at a time in water one female can lay 3000 eggs all these eggs get fertilized externally from the male frog sperm which again is uh, uh, like thrown out from the cloaca of the male and then fertilization is external and development is indirect indirect means they have a stage which is different from the parents which is called tadpole or larval stage tadpole is actually a larva of frog and then that larva undergoes metamorphosis to become the adult okay is that clear everyone cool so this is the overall our reproductive system is done so this is the overall thing that you have to study about frogs as a model system so technically your syllabus is over with this right and you know so in the next class i will first go to study the anatomy we had studied morphology of flowering plants we have, but we have not done anatomy of flowering plants correct am i correct devangi yes sir yes so in the next class on wednesday we will take anatomy of flowering plants okay cool so yeah please revise this 
and first we'll finish the stipulated legal syllabus then we'll come to the parts which are deleted but might be important for some concepts for your entrance exams that you will be giving next year so it there's no harm studying that but only if you wish so we'll do that any doubts people from today's class <laughs>